deploying an open VPN server in minutes with one simple script, plus configuring Android clients and automating connections on the Wi-Fi Pineapple. All that and more this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. Hello. Welcome to our show. My name is Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. That's right, it is. Oh, I'm very excited about this week's episode. Why is that? Because we're, we're taking the best of both worlds, free <laughs> and easy. Wait, and really? And we're like putting them together VPN style. What? Right? That's... You can do that? We can do that. We have the technology. <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> Let's jump right in because, right. <laughs> because we need to make it to the end of the show quick. I can't wait to hear who caught an Eevee. <gasps> wait, really? Oh, I hate you so yeah. much. Whatever. So, you got a Squirtle, so that's true. It in. Okay, so in recent episodes, we have been showing off OpenVPN server setup in two different ways. There's the free way, and then, of course, there's the easy way. So the first was what I would call the easy way. It's using OpenVPN Access Server, which has a really pretty web interface that I personally like very much for management, but it's only free for up to two concurrent use users, so yeah. keep that in mind. I will say, though, totally worth the money because it is super simple, and if it that's simple. that's your gig, you know, yeah. Nothing wrong with paying Just for the software. Just make the CEO pay for it. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. after which you would need to buy a license for every single connection. So the second way was installing and configuring the open source open VPN well, that from was the command fun. line. Yeah, that was very fun. And surprisingly, it was a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be crazy complicated. There's a few complications in there, but for the general consensus, I would say it was quite decent. We and now you guys have a hour. great video tutorial. <laughs> and this required manually setting up encryption keys and firewall rules, but doesn't have any fees associated with it. That's so nice. It's free, a little bit harder to do. So today we are going to show you the lazy way where you can have your key cake and you can eat it too, or in my preference, mm. you can have your Starbucks and you can eat it too. Both are free and easy, and it steps up in minutes. Is that a Battlestar Galactica reference, Dwight? Starbuck. Nuggets. Mm, all right. We're Ooh, talking about nuggets. we're talking about an epic script here, and I got to give mad shout out over to NYR over on GitHub. This here oh, is OpenVPN-install. You might imagine by the file name what that does, and it is dubbed the OpenVPN Road Warrior Installer for Debian, Ubuntu, and CentOS. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, sent OS or whatever you would like. So find <laughs> it over at this GitHub address. It is awesome. And what it does is, well, it in installs with just one command. Check this out. In one fact, command? here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this command. Yeah, it's really simple. So let me just grab this. I have a brand new virtual private server that I have set up right here. I'm actually using this really cool Chrome extension for uh, SSH, by the way. Cool. It's, um, yeah, here, I'll, I'll show you where it's under. Well, it's called Secure Shell Beta. But uh, oh. just want to point this out, Secure Shell Beta, yeah, you can find out more about that in um, the extension repository for Chrome if you're a Chrome puff like myself. But it has re quickly replaced my, um, my go-to putty because I have a love-hate relationship with putty. Regardless, yes. I'm SSH'd <laughs> into this server. I'm going to go ahead and paste this command. Ah, and I did the thing I didn't want to do. Okay. So this is, in fact, this right here is the inherent problem with a command like this and pasting where there's a carriage return at the end of the oh. command. Mm. So what gotcha. happened was, if you just do this, keep in mind, um, what, here, let's just dissect this command. What's okay. really interesting is uh, it's, it's two commands separated by ampersand, ampersand. Oh. Right? So if we take a look here, what's going on is this ampersand ampersand is kind of like a semicolon where we can basically string two commands together. Yeah, but rather yeah. than just a, a normal semicolon, which would, you know, first it would run this and then it would hit the semicolon and then it would run that. The ampersand ampersand says if the first command uh, is successful, then run the second command, oh. which is really cool because if it goes to do this and it runs this wget command and it fails, it's not going to then try to you know, run the next command, which yeah. isn't going to work. Because it depends on the first one completing successfully. Exactly. So oh, what cool. this is going to do is that first command, the wget command, it's going to go ahead and grab a file off of, well, in this case, git.io slash VPN, which, by the way, awesome address right there. That tac o is going to say, well, save the file mm -hmm. and give it this file name, uh, openvpn-install.sh. And if that's successful, what we're going to do is run bash so our, our interpreter here, the born-again right. shell, 
space openvpn dash install to sh. Okay. And what's really cool about that is it is not going to then require us to do a chmod plus x, which is typically what we do to change yeah. the mode of operation. We do to that like every week. Right? And, and so chmod plus x, all it does is make it executable. Mm -hmm. uh, if we say bash space the file name, we're already, we're, we're invoking bash, which is already executable. Yeah. And then we're telling bash, hey, here's a file I want you to run. Oh, that's cool. So that's the quick and dirty way uh, for really anything over the internet. If okay. you want to just like w get this file and then you know amp amp bash run it, uh, which is cool. You know, it it means that you can get this up and running very quickly. It's kind of not cool if this is a production server and you don't know exactly what uh. it's going to be downloading. I mean. I will say it's a pretty trusting command, we can yeah, say. It'll execute whatever you'd like. I'm in his root. That could be a problem. You are in root. Yeah. So, so shouldn't you like checksum it or something? You know, the checksum would help in that if I were concerned about the integrity of the file, like getting corrupted in transit. So right. typically we do, for instance, the Wi-Fi Pineapple, we uh, when we download the firmware, yeah. we always you recommend. Have an MD5. Well, actually, we use better than MD5. We what use SHA-256, oh, an even gotcha. better hashing yes. algorithm. But it's the same idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, if the checksum doesn't match, then th what we posted and what you downloaded were corrupt, and uh, you should download again. So are you not worried about the integrity of this file? Not in, uh, as much as I'm in <laughs> as well, concerned about the fact that I'm running this on my server. Like so if, for instance, this were man in the middle, then yeah. somebody uh, injected some malicious uh, commands into this You'd bash script, would be screwed. Thankfully, <laughs> it is HTTPS, so you can see well, that good. it's, uh, you know, I can be reasonably assured that it's not going to be messed up in transit. So this is probably not something that you want to go ahead and do on a production server, but if you just spun up a cheap virtual private server like I did, you should be good to go. Okay. You may want to just download the file and inspect it first. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was a very uh, verbose way of saying you're running something from the internet as root. <laughs> Right, uh, okay, but let's so go ahead. On. and Yeah, let's actually check out the script because as soon as I ran it, it started running the script, mm -hmm. and you can see what it does is it says, "Welcome to the the quick OpenVPN Road Warrior installer," and it's just going to ask us a few questions. It is a interactive, you know, little wizard thing, and so it automatically figures out the IP4 address of this oh, that's server, nice. and then it's going to say, "Hey, what port do you want it on?" And it's going to default to the the very default 1194. So I'm just going to hit enter, and it's like, cool. Okay. What do you, what DNS do you want? And I could sit, use the current, which is the default, or hey, look at this. They've got VeriSign, Hurricane Electric, Open DNS. Oh, that's I, cool. I like Google's. I'm going to choose two, whatever. Or I could just hit enter, and then finally give us the name. You know, by default it says client. I could say snubs, right? Snurbs. Snurbs. So I'm going to leave it as client and just hit enter, and it's like, okay, cool. That's all we needed. We're we're good to go. You hit enter, nice. and it's doing an apt-get update. So it's this going is to installing OpenVPN server right now? It's installing the OpenVPN server. Nice. Right? Then it's going to configure the certificates for us. Ooh. It's going to configure the firewall Ooh. for us. It's going to generate the keys for us, and that client OVPN okay. is going to put all that together. So really? in fact, here, check that out. It's creating our keys. Oh, that's cool. So all of that work that we did in that show in the previous week, one script. We are building on top of each of these episodes about OpenVPN. Yeah. That's what I like about this, is that you learn the theory, you learn all the hard ways to do it, and then you fully understand um, you know, the really easy ones. Right. Yeah, and you're right. We could have started with this one and be like, so do the thing, and then you're done. But yeah. you wouldn't have known what it's doing. We know that in the background, what it's doing is generating You wouldn't know how to fix the problem because you want to know what's happening. Exactly. <laughs> Man, it is taking some time to generate those keys, too. But check out the pretty ASCII art we're getting for it. So, you know, it, it reminds me of Doom 2 unpacking a WAD file. We, you know, give us a like on YouTube if that made any sense to you. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. And there we go. As you can see, everything is done for us. We've already started the VPN service. We've set up our keys. And it'll even say your client configuration is available in tilde. Cool. In our home directory as client.ovpn. And if we want, we can just go ahead and run this one more time and we'll get another key. So if I oh, ls cool. here, you can see now I have that client.ovpn file. So that's it. That's surprisingly You're ready to go. easy. You can pick up from last week where all we have to do now is copy this client ovpn file to our, to our device of choosing and dial in with it. That's awesome. So I highly recommend everybody go and check it out. It's at github.com. Github.com slash nyr. 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 Yes. 
near. Uh, I also wanted to point out that similarly, if you're not looking to do this on a virtual private server with this script, there is another, and I know that we have been asked many times about this. What? That Raspberry Pi you <gasps> got sitting in your desk drawer. Yes! I have like four of those sitting around with nothing set up on them at the moment. Well, it's time to get one set up, snubs, because it turns out Raspberry Pi is a fantastic open VPN server. Yes. Uh, because, you know, it's pretty good uptime, right? I mean, it's yeah. a pretty stable it's platform. Small, it's portable. Very low power requirements, Very. right? And so there is a nice little script there if you set up Noobs or Raspbian or any of those mm -hmm. that will allow you to, very much like this, go ahead and turn your Raspberry Pi into an OpenVPN server as well. That's awesome. Yes. So in fact, I could, it's not made for this because I'm on an x86 virtual private server here yeah. uh, called Dance Raven. Uh, props to NSA meme generator or whatever it is. <laughs> NSA. Well, maybe we should do name a generator. On actually, installing this on a Raspberry Pi. Well, we could. I could also just come over here to GitHub.com/slash Starship Engineer, oh, who nice. has the OpenVPN setup, and this is specifically for Raspberry Pi. But I want to just show you very similarly the server side. All you have to do. I've already done app get updates. I probably already have Git on this server. Let's see. Git. Nope. Okay. This is where I would run this if I had it installed, but I don't. <laughs> um, actually, hang on. Nope, can't find it. Okay, oh. well, <laughs> what that command would have done is is See fix this episodes. up. See He's previously mad. previous episodes about that command that <laughs> fixes things. Okay, so now that I have Git, I can come back over here and basically all I have to do is clone this guy's repository, which is awesome. So let's do that. And then cd over to it, and you'll see that um, I need to make this mm -hmm. uh, executable. Yep, executable. But now, if I run openvpn setup.sh, mm -hmm. I'm great. Ah. Check that out. It's a pretty little menu, Very like the land cool. turtle. Yes, it and is. I can go ahead and choose, like, okay, let's set up our server. And it's like, yeah. And of course, it's going to be referencing the Raspberry Pi. I'm not on one, but let's just do some imagination here. We'll continue. And let's keep our version of Grub because that could be bad on this VPS. And then we give it our local IP. And you know what? I don't even know what that is, but we're going to go ahead and just give it the public IP. We'll give it the public IP again. And then we're going to use 2048 bit encryption. And then it's going to be like, okay, we're ready to go. Press enter. And that's it. And as you might imagine, it's doing very similar to that previous script and it's generating those keys. And it's going to set everything up for you. And That's when awesome. you're ready to create your clients, you just run this script again, choose create a client, and it walks you through the whole thing. Yay. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't have a Raspberry Pi right here on the desk, but use some imagination that it's exactly the same process. That's so great. Yeah. So that's Yay. just another props to another awesome GitHub project, and you can find that over at github.com slash starship engineer. Nice. So yes. So what's next? OK, well, when we get back, we're going to be talking about getting OpenVPN clients set up on Android and configuring your Wi-Fi pineapple to dial in on boot. Ooh. First, a quick word from our sponsors. Domain.com. Building your own OpenVPN server is an awesome idea. And you know what else is an awesome idea? Giving it a sweet domain name, like the best OpenVPN server on the internet.com. You can probably get that over at Domain.com. That's where Shannon and I shop because they have an awesome domain discovery system that makes it super easy to find the right domain for you and their checkout process is super simple, meaning your website's going to be up and running and online in no time. And get this, the guys over at Domain.com, huge fans of Hack5, so they've got the hookup just for you. 20% off. That's right. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5. That spells HACK5. Do that at checkout and save yourself a bundle over at Domain.com. And you know what? You should tweet them at Domain.com and say, hey, thanks for supporting HACK5 all these years. When you think domain names, think Domain.com. We're back and we have a few of your OpenVPN questions. First up, and no attribution to this one since it comes from, like, everybody. But essentially, how do you set up an OpenVPN client on Android? Awesome question. I'm glad you asked. And this is something that you should absolutely be doing yes. and that we will be doing as we do things Play like... Play Pokemon Go. 
It's because she wants to play Pokemon Go while she's at DEF CON. I do. She's scared to I, use her phone at I really want to play Pokemon Go at DEF CON and see what kind of like desert Pokemon are available. Is um, one of the reasons why we use something like, I don't know, Signal for messaging at a hostile yep. environment that yeah. is DEF CON. But yes, there's, <laughs> there, you should always be in, whether you're using Wi Fi or LTE, you should be protecting your traffic regardless. And so we love OpenVPN. And if you've been following along this long, you probably do as well. And you're probably wondering, how do I make my Android do that the same way my Wi-Fi pineapple does? I don't know why I'm so like... So you can play Pokemon Go. <sighs> yes. So let's Shut up, check it out. Shut up, play it too. I am, I am. <laughs> so this is my uh, phone's screen um, mirrored over here. And so you can see in the Play Store, you will find the... There's two. There's OpenVPN Connect by actual OpenVPN. And it's got like 10 million downloads. Um, this one's pretty robust. So I actually have that over here. Let me go ahead and open that guy up. And you'll see... Now, what you need to do is you need to transfer your OpenVPN config file, that client.ovpn, over to here to the OpenVPN client. Go to More and then Import, and then import the profile from SD card. Then scroll all the way down to wherever you have saved it and find your client.ovpn. Ah. That's the same one that we just created in the previous block or um, segment. <laughs> and then hit Select. Okay. Okay. And then we can go ahead and hit Connect. And there we go. We're connected, and we can see duration of our connection, nice. how many packets received and sent, and now all of our traffic is going oh. through that uh, VPN. Oh, that's so cool. I want to point out some preference pro uh, stuff here, that there is a battery saver mode where you can actually pause the VPN when the screen is blank. Uh, I don't really recommend that. I also recommend you know setting it up so that it will reconnect every time you boot. You want to make it seamless so that um, you know, it'll block any internet traffic that isn't going through the VPN. And the very first time you do this, you will get a pop-up from Android saying like, hey, there's a new service that wants to register as a VPN provider. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is actually hooking into some very low-level stuff within Android, allowing it to do this. So you don't need a rooted phone. You don't need IP tables That's in your so kernel great. or anything weird like that. It has gotten so much better Yay. over these years. Uh, so I did just want to point that out. It's that simple. As far as actually transferring your OpenVPN uh, connection, mm -hmm. you know, that, that OVPN file securely from, say, your server in the cloud or be it your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Uh, the best way to do that, you could do it like thumb drive, you know, and sneaker net the thing over. But I just wanted to point out that there's a, a pretty good app here that I like called AND FTP. So AND FTP, I have it set up right here. And I already have a SCP connection. But uh, as you might imagine, you hit new. You type in the details of your server, oh, cool. and then it has a couple of protocols that it supports, including SCP. And as you guys know, SCP is just copying over SSH. So as long as we can SSH into our server, and that's what I have over here. So I'll go ahead and click through to SCP over to this server. And then I go ahead and authenticate. All right, and as you can see here, I'm currently looking at slash root. And there is not only my, OV, uh, my OpenVPN install SH, but you'll notice that client OVPN file. So all I have to do is select that and hit download, and it's going to go ahead and download that over SSH to my phone. So there you go. That's a secure way to transfer that client OVPN file to your phone. That's so cool. Uh, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I am too. And we also got a question from Alberto who writes, Hi, Darren. Love the show. I have a question. Can you show us or me how to make the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano connect to an open VPN on boot, making a boot script? Great question. This follows up with one of our first segments on setting up OpenVPN, as specifically when we used a Wi-Fi Pineapple, in this case a Nano, or you could use a Tetra, uh, or really any open WRT-based device. Okay. Uh, and the idea here was that, and you should go back and watch this episode if you haven't, it's pretty cool, of creating a VPN access point so that anything connected to, in this case, Wi-Fi Pineapple, uh, anything we'll connected, connected to this to over Wi-Fi, Exactly. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about having a client on your Android and a client on your Kindle. You're not going to find a Kindle client. And a client on all of those esoteric different devices, everything going through the Wi-Fi and on, in this case, the Wi-Fi Pineapple, is going to go through that VPN. The question about yes. setting this on startup, very important because it was a manual process that we showed. Yeah. And you, if you want to set this... You have to redo it every single time, right? Exactly. In fact, this is what I do. Um, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, T-Mobile is awesome, at least here in the San Francisco Bay Area, with their LTE getting like 40 megabits a second, which is fantastic, way better than any DSL that I could get. However, they throttle certain packets 
if they know what the packet is, which is why I've gone ahead and done this because I use an old cell phone tethered to a Wi-Fi pineapple at my house as a way to connect to the internet because I'm, cool. I don't want to spend way too much money with AT&T on a DSL service that's crap. Yeah. So that notwithstanding, anyway, I just got tired of uh, T-Mobile throttling my stuff. Might as well run it through a VPN. But I do want to make sure that if I unplug and replug my Wi-Fi pineapple, my home access point, uh, that that VPN reestablishes. So let me show you what I did. And it's just as simple as opening up an SSH connection here just as you normally would to your Wi-Fi Pineapple. All right, and so I'm connected, I can LS, and I see I've got my client OVPN file right there in slash root. And let's go ahead and edit this file in slash etsy slash rc.local. And I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about this. Basically, when a modern machine boots up, mm -hmm. right, there's a number of processes that it goes through to everything in the working order that you know and love. Yeah. You've got you know, your BIOS and then there's a bootloader and it'll initialize a kernel, kernel which will set up a file system which will spin up all of the background processes. So usually when we talk about starting up a user land program, and that is to say a program that runs outside of the operating system. You know, not like a driver or something as part of the kernel, but rather... Like running Skype or something? Yeah, Skype, Photoshop, Steam, all of okay. those are user land applications, and so is this OpenVPN. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, we want it to run after all of those other services have started. Oh. So, in Windows, you may be familiar with there's a startup folder. Mm -hmm. And anything that you put in there is going to go ahead and start up, whether it's a program or a shortcut to a program. And it's going to start up after Windows completes loading everything. Right. And you get the hourglass of hell, and we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> on Linux, it's a little different. It really depends on the version you have. So I'm on Ubuntu 16.04, and I have Systemd. Right, and systemd is one of the many rewrites over the history of Linux, yeah. uh, finding the one perfect the initialization routine. Right. The Wi-Fi Pineapple in particular, it runs not Ubuntu, but rather OpenWRT, which is a flavor of embedded mm. Linux. And it has a boot process very similar to any other p modern PC. Cool. Bootloader, uh, execute the kernel, mount the file system, kicks off a bunch of scripts. Okay. Uh, so in the case of the Wi-Fi Pineapple, we're not using systemd, but rather if we take a look at slash etsy slash rc.d, we'll notice oh. that we have a bunch of these different scripts. Okay. Okay, so basically what we're going to have here are scripts that begin with an S and scripts that begin with a K. Okay. All right? So and what so, do those mean? Well, the S scripts are your startup scripts. And, and K is for kill? K is for kill. Got it. All right. Yes. Cool. That makes complete sense. Right. And so uh, on boot, it's going to go ahead and actually just execute all of those S or startup scripts in numerical order. So oh, let cool. me go ahead and ls those again. And you can see I'll do an ls tag la slash slash rc dot d. So you can see them in a nice little list. These are actually symlinks. And they are symlinks to different oh. init d scripts, right? Yes. So you can see that it begins Symbolic with, links. for instance, you know, setting up boot and setting up the system, yeah. setting up the firewall, setting up the network and USB then USB, okay. setting up the FS tab for the file system, setting up PHP and SSHD and all of those other things. Okay. And you can see that when it gets to, you know, when it's almost done, when it's pretty much done, file really. ninety five done. S ninety five <laughs> done, right? <laughs> so, so done will actually reference another file, and that is called rc.local. Uh, so that's that oh. one that I was telling you about. That's kind of like, you know, if you're an old DOS guy, it's sort of like an auto exec dot bat from back in the day. I don't know what that is. Okay, well, you would just, you know, make auto exec dot bat do a uh, uh, 10 print snurbs is the derpy derp and uh, 20 <laughs> go to 10. I feel uh, young. Run that with you, basic. <laughs> so basically, what you want to do is put anything you would like in the rc.local file. Okay. So check this out. If I go over to, or I don't have to go anywhere, if I just nano that slash etsy slash rc.local file, you'll notice it says put your command above this line. Oh. As long as it ends with that exit zero, we're all good. Yeah. So uh, as you might remember, uh, I have this client OVPN file in slash root. So if I now say open VPN and then um, slash, I, I think I just say, Open VPN service? Actually, you just say, you just pass it slash well, the, the, the file. So in this case, slash root slash client to OVPN. 
And then, so th the first thing it's going to do on boot after it finishes all of those other things is gets S95 done. It's going to run the script, which is going to run OpenVPN. And so I'll that's going to start the service. Yep, run that in the background. And then the next thing I'm going to do is those IP tables. And I cheat sheet and just keep them right here so that I can just paste <laughs> them in. And boom, there we go. We just that's really cool. save that file, close it out. And now every time you boot, it's going to execute those scripts. It's going to, so cool. it's going to, you know, do all of that for you like we had done in that previous episode. So that is kind of the hacky way to do this. I so would that makes it just start up automatically every time you're working on the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Exactly. Gotcha. And that's okay. the same way that you can do anything that you want to happen on boot on any machine that uses this initialization scheme. Okay. So check your slash Etsy for an rc.local file. And um, I would say that the proper way, just so I don't get a bunch of emails, is to actually add the firewall rules to your slash Etsy config firewall configuration script or file, and then go ahead and you know use the uh, the proper initd script for OpenVPN to start it as a service and okay. enable it so that it starts up on boot. But listen, if you just take the commands that we did from the previous week and pop them into this file, it's going to get the job done. That is so cool. Yes. That was awesome. so much fun. Now I feel fun. like we know how to do this in every way possible. I think the only thing we're missing is i, I devices. iOS. Are we going to bring one of those on Hack 5? Yeah, we could. Yeah, sure. I mean, let us guys know. Do you want do you want to do some iOS stuff? We we could. Um, <laughs> He's just like, oh, oh, I don't know. I mean, if you guys actually, I can't. Want I really, I can't. I can't be a hater. I'm I'm rocking a Windows box right now. Yeah, that's true. You know, you like what if I? Everybody oh, gives you crap for that. I know. I'll switch to a Chromebook. Maybe we can say anything. <laughs> I'll run Emacs. All right. So we have so switch <laughs> over to. Come back over here. No, no. I'll get a netbook. I know. I know. No, get over here. Get We're not done yet. Puppy we have Linux. some dates. Puppy Linux. Yeah. That's my thing. Uh, we have some dates to announce. Uh, first off, we have a pen test with Hack5 coming up in September. It's September 16th through the 18th. It's three days hands-on training with the guys and ladies at Hack5. Uh, we're oh, going to go over everything it's from... Special. Yeah, it's so. Pineapple, yep, duck, pineapple turtle, duck. metasploit, and putting them all together in a story-driven environment that is very <laughs> much theatrical and immersive and so cool. fun. So it's unlike uh -oh. any InfoSec training you've ever heard of. I don't want to spoil it by giving too much away other than saying it's a real delight. Uh, so check that out. Pentestwithhack5.com. We love doing it. And also we're going to DEF CON. It's DEF CON 24 this year, and we will be there with a booth selling the things. And we're going to be there with some of our friends. We have a special guest this year. Oh, very exciting. Yes. Should um, we tell them who Yeah, it is? Brian Brushwood from, uh, you know, Scam stuff, Brian and Brushwood. BB Live, and everything. Hacking else. the system. Oh, scam school, all of them, sham school, all the good stuff. Going to be there in force at our booth, so that's cool too. Um, Super exciting. I don't know what to expect. I have no idea what I he's bringing, but I'm sure it'll be an <laughs> awesome bag of tricks. So check that out. Uh, that's going to be Dual really Core fun. Dual will be joining us as well. So it's going to be good fun. We hope to see you at DEF CON. Yes. And if you can make it, check out hack5.org for details on a possible meetup to go to the movies because awesome. there's a special movie we would like to see with you. Yeah, um, I believe this episode is releasing a few days before the new Born 5 movie. So um, hashtag fake DEFCON on that. But that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say about. Me. Yeah. I once had pink hair. Oh, man. So good. So I can't wait to talk about that. So I know, anyway, right? <laughs> yes, good stuff. Uh, feedback at hack5.org is how you can contact us directly. Otherwise, leave us a comment below. Find all of our other shows as well as our products and the events that we're doing over at our homepage, hak5.org. I love your guys' support of this show for over a decade, especially if you want to get some of the tools that we develop and use here, like the Wi-Fi Pineapple, the Land Turtle, the USB Rubber Ducky. You can find all of those over at our very own store, Hack Shop. That's hakshop.com. Thank you so much for your support on that. And with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technolust. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon! I no want to be see that. the very best, like no one ever was. Do, 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 to catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Each Pokemon, uh, some, some.
the power that's inside. Pokemon, Pokemon. gotta catch them all. <laughs> okay, we're done here. All right. <laughs> okay. Mm. Coffee. Coffee.